What's up, man? How you doing? That's too bad. I like the guitar wall behind you. It's a good look. I like I that. How, I don't know how to play any of them. So <laughs> you just, you learn. It's, it's kind of like an inspiration thing. I once had a friend who was like really overweight. And so yeah. he bought a really small shirt and he hung the small shirt in his uh, bedroom. And he was yeah. like, every day I'm going to see that shirt. He never lost the weight, but he did have the inspiration right there. I've tried the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a bunch of medium t-shirts in my in my closet that I'm like one day one day it's funny how some shirts I have are like medium and they fit and some shirts are like large I can't ever find a concept I got to try everything on I you know there for a while I kind of like it was like right after idol I probably fluctuated between medium and large and then one day it was just like oh okay then I'm just large now <laughs> I love a, it like such a shit thing it's just like I, I don't know why like I have such a problem with the idea of like Telling people, oh, what size you are? Large. <laughs> oh, why it bothers me so much. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, my favorite is that uh, bands will send me t-shirts and they probably just send me the cheapest ones or maybe the ones they're not going to sell a lot of. Mm -hmm. So I get so many 2XL and 3XLs to the station. And I'm always like, do I need to post a full body picture so y'all stop doing that? This is offensive. <laughs> well, Dave, it's good to see you, man. Thanks for joining me on the show, dude. It's good to have you on. Finally, we talked about having you on before in the past. So I'm glad we got to make it happen, my friend. Yeah, I feel like God, these, that conversation started, what, like a year ago, maybe? I think so. Right around the time yeah, that we met. It's funny, you know, I don't know if I actually told you this, but uh, when I first met you at the grunge night, uh, when we both played some songs together, yeah. that was the first night. And before I even talked to you, um, you had your hair was kind of long at the time in a ponytail. So I'm backstage and I don't know if you've ever gotten this comparison before. You may not even remember who this artist is, but a friend of mine and I were talking and I looked over and I was like, whoa, Vast is here. Do you remember Vast from back in the early 2000s? There was an artist named Vast. I'll have to get up a picture whenever this airs to pop up. Yeah. He had like one hit right in like the, around the same time, like a much music, like a, and like a, <laughs> it's a one in wonder. But, I'm glad uh, I reminded like, you of that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gotta be him. But, um, but he had one hit and like, just you, some reason looked at I mean, you still kind of look like him, but with the hair, it was uh, pretty spot on. But then I realized who you were. We talked and we became friends. And uh, it was that, pretty. For that, I'm going to send you another 2XL t shirts with it. <laughs> and I'll only sign it from Vast. I'll be extremely mm -hmm. stoked. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Funny. But uh, it's funny, Dave, like uh, whenever uh, Mike Ball, your bass player or one of your bass players, I should say, whenever he hit me up to fill in and play some drums with you, which was a great time. I always love playing with you guys. Um, I was obviously familiar with the hit songs that you had um, for after American Idol from the days of driving around in a van. And we listened to the radio, me and my band would be on the road. I would hear all your hits. Mm -hmm. um, and when he sent me, I believe it was the stuff from The Looking Glass and obviously later on Tabos. But when he first sent it to me, I was like, oh, man, like this is some rocket <laughs> stuff. Thank and I you. feel like it was a lot more rocking than I expected. Do you find that a lot? Like people that know you from American Idol, do you, does your stuff seem a bit more rocking? I think uh, there, there's certainly been an evolution. And I say that in the context of like, it, it, it's it's been a little circular. I think, um, you know, I, I, I kind of cut my teeth and grew up in rock bands and stuff around the Kansas City area and then later in Oklahoma. Um, and so, and then coming, you know, coming through the, the idol experience, it became, okay, how do I, how do I take, how do I remain true to myself as a, as a songwriter and as a musician and a performer? Like, how do I take that and try to navigate and like, you know, fit into this space? Uh, because, you know, at that time, and I, I don't know to what degree this still exists, but at that time, uh, you know, rock radio really didn't want much to do with idol. Uh, and so, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a bit of pissing in the wind, I guess. Um, and, and so I, it was trying to like, I don't know, find a happy medium there. And, um, you know, the lesson I learned from that is, is really, uh, you know, when you try to find a happy medium creatively, nobody really wins. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think it was just kind of a reinvestment in what uh, what gets me excited as a musician. You know, I, I love uh, I like rock music, so trying to um, uh, get back to that and still incorporate some of the 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 tricks that I might have picked up. You know, kind of going through that that process, um, but it's been a blast, man. And I, I, you know, the new stuff. 
Um, I, I feel like every person says this, but it, it, yeah, it's probably true most of the time. Like I do feel like this is the strongest stuff I've ever done. And I feel like, um, you know, being a little older now and having more experience to pull from makes for, uh, you know, hopefully stronger <clears throat> stuff for the listener. Yeah, absolutely, man. And speaking of getting older, we should point out that the big show coming up on Tuesday is your 40th birthday extravaganza at the city winery on your 40th birthday. I just realized tonight it's on your birthday. Yeah, we, we should, you know, you don't have to say 40 so loud. You can, a little <laughs> an echo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An echo too. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I've done a birthday show here in Nashville the last few years and, and tried to make it like a, you know, like a birthday slash holiday deal. And, and, uh, um, you know, fans have been awesome about it. They travel out, they come out to the show. We try to make it, you know, uh, sort of the, the last big thing before uh, the end of the year. Um, and then my management this year was just like, hey, do you want to do a birthday show this year? And and I took that as yeah, yeah, like a birthday show, like I've been doing, and I've never done one on my birthday. Yeah. Uh, and then I saw it on the calendar. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. So or, <laughs> um, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I've got a I, I, well, I don't have to, I get to play a show on my birthday <laughs> and then, uh, drive home the next day back to KC for the holidays. So, um, I might, I might have a drink on my birthday. <laughs> Just one. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than like a big, long drive when you've got a hangover. There's nothing worse. Oh, dude, worse. there's <laughs> nothing worse than that. They're absolutely not the worst. And I feel like people always told me when I was younger, how much worse the hangovers get. They weren't kidding. They were not kidding around one bit. Do you remember your, like, I, I, it was like a big, uh, life moment for me. The first time I had a two day hangover. Oh yeah. you like that. I put a flag in that moment. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's all. So this is the other side of it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Now, I mean, like I've, I figured out like my, my formula is if I feel it the night of, like, if I feel like, Oh, I'm, I'm pretty tipsy the night of, then I got a two day hangover coming done. Yeah. It's, it's, Absolutely, man. And I've I've tried like I've had buddies just like oh you know every time you take a, a you have a drink like then have a drink of water and then go back and forth. That every time I've done that, it's never worked. I've had friends tell me about charcoal pills, nothing. It's never worked. So if anybody yeah. out there like has some cure all, I'm open to suggestions because I haven't found yeah. It. yeah yeah yeah. was like the, besides the obvious one, which is waking up and just starting over and just keep it going. I guess it's all you can do sometimes. Man, that is that is a. Uh, that's that's a dangerous game you're playing friend <laughs> it really is mm -hmm. i think it's cool though that uh when i saw your post about it, though i do think it's cool because i feel like we live in an entertainment industry in a town especially where a lot of people lie about their age and they don't really promote like how old they're actually turning and i think it's admirable you're just putting it right there on the poster man well jesus i mean uh, look at this like i'm not hiding it real well so <laughs> uh no I, I mean listen man it's it's uh I, you know, I do make jokes about it. Like, I, uh, I think I, when we first promoted it, I was like, this is the 19th anniversary of my 21st birthday. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I was talking about this today, actually. I, I used to, like, when I turned 29, like, I had a big problem with it. And I think it was like the mentality, like, oh, my 20s are almost over. This is the last year of my 20s. 30, fine. Totally fine. 39 really messed me up. Yeah. Um, 40. Um, I don't know yet. I go through moments where it's just like, yeah, who cares? You know, like I, I, I'm going to wake up when I'm 40 and the stuff that hurt the last day of 39 is going to hurt the first day of 40. And that's okay. Uh, and then there's other moments where it's just like, oh God, like what happened to the last <laughs> years? You know what I mean? But I think ultimately, man, I'm, I'm, uh, dude, I'm, I'm in a, I, I'm ultimately pretty thankful. I'm in a pretty awesome spot for 40. You know, I get to play music for a living still, which like, if you'd have told me when I was 20, like you'll get to be a touring musician when you're 40, I'd be like, sign me up. I'm in. So oh, uh, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to choose grateful and see where it takes me. I like that. And I feel like when I talk to like younger bands about aging, because you and I are in the exact same boat, just a few months apart. Yeah. Uh, when I talk to younger bands about the aging stuff and getting older in music, I always tell them you can be Slash or you can be Axel. Who do you want to be? Because Axel looks horrible and Slash looks old, but he still looks awesome. Oh my God. You know, I, you know, I, I, I can't figure if I'm in the majority of the minority, one of, uh, one of those people that really enjoys that, um, 
that slash commercial that just came out where he's auditioning <laughs> for the new band. Yeah, yeah. I I, I really like that commercial. I chuckled when I first saw it, and then and then I was like, oh man, did I just was did I just laugh at like an old man joke? Is that what happened? <laughs> No, dude, it's so true. And it's wild too. I feel like a bit of my, speaking of Guns N' Roses, I feel like a bit of my soul dies every time I see Axl Rose tweeting something. The fact that Axl Rose, like the king of cool and rock and roll when we were kids is on Twitter, blows my mind. And it's on Instagram too, I think. It's, uh, you know, years ago, I got asked a question about um, somebody else that had gone through the idol process. And they said, uh, this reporter was like, do you think they're the next iteration of David Bowie? And I was like, no, like, how could he be, you know, like, like Bowie was androgynous and mysterious and nobody, you know, you didn't know anything about David Bowie other than like, he was from Mars, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, literally. And now it's like, uh, every tabloid magazine's got like 25 things you didn't know about celebrity A, B or C. And, um, everybody's got a you know uh, most people have a twitter now and then everybody's got an instagram or a tiktok or a facebook or all of it and um and whatever else is going uh, yeah i i I've, I've made somewhat of a conscious decision to stop getting on new social media things as i find myself like uh, there's a bell curve to it for me where it's just like oh, i hate this and i'll get a manager to like post stuff for me occasionally and then I get into it myself because I'm like, you know what? That's really lazy. And I, sh I should do it myself and I do it myself. And then next thing you know, like I'll get a notification on my phone. Like you averaged 11 hours a day on your phone. This <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've I've resisted TikTok up to this point, mainly because like I don't like dancing. And yeah. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of what else I would do on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the thing too. I feel like if if the world ended tomorrow and all the the future people who come here from another planet find is TikTok, they're going to be like, did these people just dance all the time? Is that all they did? I, I, well, I I would argue they might just get up and move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's just like I think of like all the stupid things I did when I was a kid, all the really embarrassing things. I'm like, thank God nobody was documenting that, dude. Literally and now, like. There's there is a digital footprint of every dumb thing you've decided to do and then post on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. What I can't even mess. imagine. I cannot this, even this conversation is the oldest conversation I have ever had, by the way. <laughs> well, you are welcome. I love that. Yeah, this this, is, this I... is one of those damn these kids conversations. <laughs> I really actually grew my beard just for this, just Dude. so we can have like a, a gentleman conversation. Listen, you know, you you just at some point we just have to lean into it, right? Yeah, yeah you have to. You're holding stronger to the color. Like mine's just <laughs> it's like this, this whole thing here is like a wildfire, and it's just spreading yeah. rapidly. Well, what's frustrating is I've been trying to grow a full beard since 1998, and I've always had trouble in here. So I guess it's just going to never come in, and maybe it'll go gray. I'll have a gray goatee, like maybe 45. I I had the same problem until uh I forget why, but I had like a I had like a pocket of time where I was home and it was like months where like I was home and writing and recording and not on the road. And I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna let it go and see what happens. And man, like same pro like and now like I have no issue with it, but there for a while like I, I couldn't get it to really connect or do much or grow in really full, and then I let it go and it got like down to about here. Yeah. And now I don't have that problem anymore. So I th my advice to you from one old man to another is just let it go. Just let it go. I love yeah. that's the philosophy of the day. <laughs> let it go. Yeah, just let it go. <laughs> We're talking to David Cook on the local buzz. One of the things whenever you and I first met last year was we kind of related on uh, some bands that a lot of people that I've always met in my life don't like, which is one of the things that I immediately loved about you. We related on the fact that we both loved Our Lady Peace, Big Wreck, and Eight Stop Seven. And that just blew my mind because I feel like, especially that last band, Eight Stop Seven, completely falls by the wayside now and no one really knows about them. So I, I actually have uh, a, a story about Eight Stop Seven. Um, so, and I can't remember if I told you this or not. Um, so when I went to high school um, in Blue Springs, Missouri, at Blue Springs South High School, go Jaguars. Um, uh the his his now wife i think his then girlfriend was an alum of that high school and oh wow every year they used to do this thing called mr jaguar and it was this end of year 
uh, like male variety show where guys would just go up and act like idiots. And then uh, there was like a question and answer session and a talent section and uh, a swimsuit section. Like it was really ridiculous. Uh, Yeah. But uh, so I was doing it uh, my senior year. I was a part of it. And uh, Evan, the singer's wife, for whatever reason, was giving him uh, a tour of the school. And so we're rehearsing during the during school and he walks into the uh, the performing arts center where we're at. And I recognize him because my uh, my band uh, mates and I at the time, I just wore that record out that first record. Yeah. And uh, so I was talking to him. I was like, would you want to like be like a celebrity judge for this? And like, I think about it now, like how much I would not want to do that if somebody asked me. <laughs> Do you want to judge a high school <laughs> male beauty pageant effectively? <laughs> yeah. But he was so cool and agreed to do it. And um, uh, for the talent thing, me and a, and a bunch of musician buddies, we sang uh, we sang a, a Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. Oh, nice. And uh, he uh, he came up to me afterwards and said, hey, you guys were like, you guys were pretty good. You should you should do something like record, like go out and make an EP or something. And uh, so if it wasn't for Evan, I probably wouldn't have had the, the brass to like go actually do something with music, you know? No way. Um, yeah. And, and so uh, I ran, I talked to him. I think the last time I talked to him was not long after idol. We just kind of emailed back and forth and uh, yeah, man, still such a nice dude. And, um that record was a a big like you know like when you're coming up and learning how to play an instrument and playing shows for the first time like you have those seminal records that really um resonate with you and um become almost like god i would love to do that uh that first eight stop seven record was one of those for me for sure yeah, dude, it's so great. And one of those bands that just kind of fell off. I looked up a couple of years ago and they reunited. And I think they were playing like one of their buddies' backyard barbecues on this little stage, but they yeah. sounded great. They played like Question Everything and all those tunes. And I was like, wow, they still got it, man. That uh, Evan had, has, I shouldn't say had, like they're not, like they're not here anymore, but uh, Evan has one of those voices, man, like it, just a distinctive tone to it. Um, I, I love talking to him about, his recording process because he like i don't know if he still did this does this more recently but at the time this was like turn of the century (laughs) (laughs) it's true but jesus christ uh yeah so like this was 2001 he was like adamantly against like using auto-tune in the studio at all like not even to like tweak a vocal or or just get something locked in like just hardcore against it um and uh and, and which you know for for anybody that's been in a studio and recorded a vocal that means a ton more work like you are going in singing these songs and then if something's not 100 percent right you're re-singing it you can't just you know yeah nudge it in place so uh now having the experience that i've had over the last you know decade and a half 20 years however long it's been so i've been recording to be able to know kind of what that process means, like tip of the cap to that dude. That that's 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 uh that's an endurance test for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I feel like your latest single, Tabos, is kind of a nod to some of that music with those guys and Big Wreck and things like that. Uh and I, I loved playing that song with you. I felt really honored to play drums on it the very first time you ever played it live. Dude, we were honored to have you. I felt a lot of pressure. I was like, man, we got to count this in ride. We'll see what happens. But is, is the new record or new, the new stuff in 2023 going to kind of lend kind of towards that direction? Um, you know, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm slowly putting more stuff together and um, writing really without a net, which is uh, typically when I come up with my best stuff, but it's just sort of all over the map. So uh, I, I, kind of the way I write is I just, I go in any direction that I'm feeling like going that day. And then when I get a bunch of stuff that I feel like it feels like a cohesive collection, then I start focusing in on that. So, uh, but I mean, I've got other songs like that. I've got songs that are, uh, um, 
you know, more of the really uh, tight, uh, dry drum kit sound with like a lot of, you know, uh, like a flat wound string bass oh, nice. uh, kind of underneath it. So, um, so yeah, I, I think 23 is just going to be about, I would imagine the same thing as most artists, man, like 22 was about kind of re emerging from, uh, from home and not being out on the road and, uh, working that muscle out again, uh, getting out in front of audiences, re-engaging with people that, uh, we hadn't gotten to see face to face in a long time. And, uh, so 23 is going to be about kind of doing more of the same, trying to get some, mu- mu- some new music out and, uh, yeah, man, just keep plugging. I love that, man. That's what it's all about. David yeah. Cook back on the road in 2023 playing new rock and roll tunes. I love that. Well, David, since you're here, we definitely got to play the five random question game, my friend, if you'd like to play. I'm in. All right. Five random questions with David Cook on the local buzz. No right answers, no wrong answers necessarily. Question number one, since it is the holiday season, Christmas shopping early or last minute? How do you roll? Early. Nice. My anxiety is too high for last minute. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Question number two with David Cook on the local buzz. So the big show this Tuesday night at the city winery, 40 Jägermeister shots to the stage or no? Uh, (laughs) Only because I have to drive the next day. Probably not, but normally, yes. Right on power hour. Well, I'll send you 40 Rumpelman shots. It'll be great. It'll be the one most wonderful 40th day of your life. My 21st, uh, I don't remember who decided to play the game for me, but somebody set up this game where when I walked on stage, there were 21 shots across the front of the stage. I had to take one for each song. And it was either butterscotch schnapps or wild turkey. (laughs) And they look exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, I remember like the first 10 maybe and that's a power I'm, hour that's a power. Yeah, i'm not i'm sure as hell not playing that on tuesday yeah no. the irony of like power hours as you get older you'll just die there's no way you could do it maybe when you're 21 but 40 nope question no, no, number no. three with david cook on the local buzz what is one christmas song you can absolutely not stand I'll, I'll, only because it's just overplayed uh the the mariah carey christmas song all I want for feel that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I feel like I have so many local band cover versions of that. Every Christmas season, I get tons of that song. It's like a rock version. I, I get so, it. It's a good song, but um, yeah, no, I'm I'm fine. Same. Feel that. Question number four, David Cook on the local buzz. If you could have one dream direct support tour slot for any band ever, alive or dead, who would it be? Just one. Just one. All right. Uh, I'll just give you the full the full bill. Three band bill. We open uh, Big Wreck Midlines nice. and uh, Zeppelin Headlines. See, I would totally pay for that. I would totally pay and come watch I that show. I'd stay for all three bands. <laughs> I, I would too, just to play that set. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like how. Yeah, I love how you're going first, then Big Wreck, then Led Zeppelin. I like that. Come on. I know I know which side my bread is buttered on. <laughs> and question number five, the final question with David Cook on the local bus. So a trend I notice a lot in the music industry, I'm sure you've noticed this as well, too, <laughs> is a lot of times like artists will do a, a reluctant Christmas record, I call it. Like you'll you'll see a guy, you're like, wait a minute, a management decision was made and this guy has to do that. So I wanted to ask you if your management came to you next year, Christmas 2023, and they're like, Dave, it's just not happening, man. It's over. You've got to do a Christmas record. We're talking David Cook is Mr. Christmas, or you have to not do that and just die with dignity. What do you choose? Are, are you talking about the Twisted Sister Christmas record? <laughs> I mean, that's definitely one that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Re- you know, what's funny. I do love that record. Um, uh, I mean, I would, I, I would love to say, no, I'll just, I'll just, I'll die with dignity, but <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I got bills to pay and uh, my, my college degrees in graphic design, which doesn't pay nearly as well. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Follow la la la. Yeah. You'll die with dignity and you got to have money to pay for the expensive funeral. That's the Christmas record. <laughs> That's right. That's what it is. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for playing, man. <laughs> you won. You that, last the question, that last question is not fair, by the way. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, dude, 40th birthday extravaganza coming up this Tuesday night at the City Winery. It's got a show at 730. But I've also noticed there's a VIP meet and greet package available 5 p.m. What kind of stuff comes with the meet and greet VIP package? Uh, this one in particular, we have uh, we have uh, I designed some uh, some birthday hats. Oh, nice. Uh, with, with my face on them because I, I I'm I have an ego. And uh, <laughs> and then we are actually going to record one of the songs from the show. And, it, and then everybody who's, uh, who comes to the VIP will get the re- uh, recording of that song. So, Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. That's awesome, man. I love that. Always going an extra mile. Speaking of going an extra mile for the fans, have you seen the uh, Matt Healy from the 1975 stuff that's been trending on Twitter all day long? No. I guess we're he's good. doing we're this good. new thing where he walks down and he finds like, I, I assume it's some sort of prearranged thing. I would assume he has to card people, but he walks down and finds a random girl. He puts on chapstick and then just makes out with them. Like it's this whole new thing every night, a different girl. And apparently it's like making dreams come true, I guess. But I, I do find it funny. I always wonder if if he was to be, let's say some young girl is like, oh my God, it's my dream kiss. And Matt Healy comes down and he's about to kiss him, but he has like a really big cold sore. Would they still do it? I always wonder that. Maybe to have you. Your- should bring, you should bring a fan of the 1975 and that be one of their five questions. <laughs> That's what I think. Would you still do it? They're like, yeah, yes, yeah. I would. Of course, yeah, I imagine they would say yes because it's it's uh it's in the abstract. Like when the rubber meets the road, no pun. Yeah, that, that's true. Are they really going to do it? Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing about the only good thing about an STD is that it'll never happen to you. That's the only good thing about it. You know, <laughs> factual statement. <laughs> well, David Cook, big, big <laughs> <show>. <laughs> on that note, good night. <laughs> Well, I'm excited awesome. for the show coming up on Tuesday, man. I'm definitely going to be there. It'll be good to see you live. I assume it's full band, right? It's not a stripped down acoustic thing or anything. It, it is full band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got some, uh, we've got some, some surprise guests sprinkled in there too. Yeah, I heard. I saw that in one of your posts. I, actually, a friend of mine texted me and asked, "So, who are the surprise guests?" As if I would know. As if I'd be like, "Oh, it's this person." I'll, I'll tell you off air. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Well, David, it's an honor to have you on the show, man. Open door policy for bands I like. You know you're one of those bands. Anytime you want to come on the show, just knock on my Zoom cam, and I'll let you in, my friend. Done. You don't know what hell you have wrought just now. <laughs> Bring it. I'll take it. Later, buddy. Well, David Cook, thank you, man.